school where there was a balance between secular and Islamic um, religious knowledge. However, after he graduated from high school, he went to university in Canada. He fell into the hands of atheists who asked him questions that had him doubt. You know, he didn't have answers. And he came once and was complaining. He said, you know, we're told to memorize the Quran. We do. We're told to read hadiths and be able to, you know, quote tips of our tongues. And yet we, you know, he said, I didn't feel the message. And because when I had him, um, I wasn't also strong in my own deen. I didn't know how. Um, in hindsight now, of course, or whatever advice I would give parents is um, you have to teach Islam in your actions. You have to be patient. Yes, we are living in modern times where there is overexposure and desensitization. Yes. And so a lot of the fitna that we would be able to, we were shielded from when we were young is not the same now. Why? Because they can see everything on their, finger, you know, on their fingertips. And so one has to adjust. I don't believe in being a hardliner. Um, I believe if Rasulullah were here today, I think we would get a new fatwa with regard to how social media is used and guidelines that would direct us in how to maneuver. But what is so wonderful is Islam is timeless. The message from Allah is till we die. And there are lessons for us to take from there that if we are to apply it to how we're raising our children in this modern age, I believe it will help us. Um, first and most important thing is develop a strong bond with your children. Keep the channels of communication open and then hold on tight to Allah's rope in the relationship um, that you have with them. Make Islam be as simple as it really is. Don't make it so heavy, don't make it so cumbersome and like you have to be a saint before you attain yes. this. It's like the deeds loved the most by Allah are those done regularly even if they're small. Allah will accept a smile and give you a reward for it. It's that simple. So for me I believe Show them the simplicity of Islam. Make them know that those small, small extras you do are actually what bring you closer to the extra sadaqah, the extra nafla, extra dua, plant a tree, you know, smile at somebody. It is so simple that I believe they will see the beauty of Islam and hopefully let it be their guide and their yes. compass and help them navigate through this modern day we live in. I think we, we often forget to, um, with, with children especially, forget to focus on their hearts. Yes. And to actually nurture, because yeah. that's the most, because once the heart is, is on Islam, yeah. they, can't, they won't be there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you reach a stage where even yeah. Allah says, you know, when the heart becomes um, hardened, it becomes blind. Yes. And when you allow them to get set in their ways, especially with overexposure and things that you think are okay and acceptable, at one point they won't see anymore, they won't see the light. And so it's really important that we always let the nur of Allah enter into our hearts and continue to pray. And for parents, I think another thing is pray, continue to pray hard for your children and pray with them. Let them hear what you pray for. You know, keep Allah close. The families that pray together, stay together. Yes, yes, that is important. Um, so now I'm just going to um, switch it back to, so if there was advice then, so the same, similar situation, people, young people find themselves very isolated within today's society. Um, being Muslim and finding it very difficult, what would you tell them? Um, this most Muslim identity crisis mm -hmm. that we're dealing with right now is universal. Um, I think in it, we suddenly found ourselves in the spotlight after 9-11 in yeah. particular when the Islamophobia um, culture began. Um, but I think the most important thing is do your own homework, know your own religion and have confidence in it. You have to believe. Once you believe, honestly, whatever insults are thrown your way, whatever somebody, even for me, if somebody gives me a dirty look and because I wear hijab everywhere, I get that occasionally yes. from people. Um, I pray for them, may Allah guide you aright. If somebody says something that is not pleasant to me or treats me in a way, Allah has told us what to do in those situations. So, you know, I know it's ignorance and that's what is causing this darkness in their hearts that they don't know better. And the best I can do is smile at them, not feed the stereotype, but actually show them the beauty in my actions yes. so that it guides them aright. So not to change and adjust because of people, but to actually use what Allah has asked us to do. Yes. And the Prophet ﷺ in the examples he's, he's set, 
to show people that you know Islam isn't what you think it is. I was chatting with um, my host here in South Africa as we were coming, um, you know, about the things to do with how we are perceived and you know how important it is that we model behavior everywhere we go. When I arrived in Ireland last couple of weeks ago when I went for a lecture, um, there was this gentleman who's not a Muslim and as I walked into the hall of the lobby of the hotel, you know, he immediately said, oh, I like this thing, the way yes. you've wrapped it. Yes. And I just really was taken aback yes. because it was in a small village in <laughs> Ireland mm -hmm. and you would expect the stereotype, whatever has been fed to them on the media yeah. is there you know because they don't see much of this but the fact that he complimented and it seemed sincere it just didn't seem like he was saying it for customer service purposes so that I come back he <laughs> yes. genuinely said it yes. you know I had a huge smile when I got in I greeted him I was lively and I feel that's what this is about yes. you know it's yes. the impre we only have one opportunity to make a first impression and let that be this yeah. is Islam yeah. I'm not a terrorist yes. I'm not waiting to die um, or kill people to go to heaven. I want to live a meaningful life yes. and touch people's lives and make the world a better place because I exist in it. Yes. Let that be the first impression. Yeah. Um, I think growing up as well with me, I mean, I just started wearing hijab as well. Um, and I was, it was a very difficult <laughs> time. And one of the things that my mom also told me was, when people are staring at you, Maybe they're just admiring you, you yeah. know? Exactly. And, I th and I think that the change in mindset of not everyone's actually looking at me with bad thoughts in their mind. Yes. They're looking at me because I'm, I look different. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. And difference is always a, a, a reason for insecurity in yes. a lot of people. Definitely. Like, yeah. you know, you get this, um, we have stereotypes mm. and we have we are used to our comfort zone, what we're, what we're familiar with. And so when they see something, some people will stare, some people will gawk at you, mm. and some people will just quietly try and look away. Yes. The most important thing is focus on what are you doing? What impression are you giving the lookers, the gawkers, and those who <laughs> yes. are not sure? Yes. What always be aware and then, you know, have confidence in yourself because once you are knowledgeable, it gives you more confidence. Once you know, and once you know, you can walk with your head up high feeling like look I'm here for a purpose yes. I'm a beautiful human being yeah. I have a lot to offer mm. and offer everyone even non-muslims so walk with deliberate steps on this earth because we have had people who have been through hell and back to make this religion last as long as it has and I am part of those who has to carry yes. that torch and yes. continue on the journey with it till whenever I go back home to Allah. Yes. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, we're actually very lucky, I think, in Cape Town and in broader South Africa as well, because it's such a, Islam is such a big part of the country's history, and, yeah. um, and it, we're actually very lucky because everywhere you look at these people in hijab and you can identify uh, Muslims wherever you go, yeah. so we actually are very lucky. I love this country so much. Yes. Wallahi, I've never been to a place where, and I, my mother is British, so I've been to England, yes. where I see Muslims accepted so well and I've been to a lot of places, but this is where I can tell this is sincere yes. I was so amazed yesterday. We prayed in um, a building that was very close to this Ferris wheel you have here in yes. Cape Town this eye It's like the London eye yeah. and there was a small mosque for men and women to do ablution and pray and I hear there are mosques and malls which is yes. not too common, Everywhere. you yeah. know, and yet yeah. here it's readily available. I have not seen one dirty look. People smile back at me. Look, I smile at everybody. I smile at <laughs> dogs and insects. Say. So, you know, it's yes. like, but I just love yes. the spirit. People yes. seem to be very comfortable. And I think um, a lot of credit goes to the Muslims because it means they're setting the right example and they're not feeding the negative stereotype. And that's what we're talking about. Yes. It's like you're not scaring them, you're not intimidating, you're actually living Islam with purpose and showing the beauty of the yes. religion. Yeah. Um, okay, so I.